Township cities and countries around the world have recently declared a state of climate emergency. This summer, the hue and cry of impending doom has reached new heights. Many still emphasize the plight of the polar bear and loss of sea ice in an Arctic warming twice as fast as the rest of the world. It's now September, and Arctic sea ice extent is approaching its low point of the year. After months of media hype, it now seems unlikely that the record-breaking low of 2012 will be exceeded. Polar bears have existed in the Arctic for hundreds of thousands of years, while the animals they depend upon for food, especially ringed and bearded seals, have lived there for millions of years. All have adapted through natural selection to the immense changes in sea ice coverage that occur organically in the Arctic. There have been several periods in the past when Arctic sea ice coverage has been greater than, and less than, what these animals have experienced in the last decade or so. During the warm Eemian interglacial, just over 100,000 years ago, there was no sea ice at all in the Bering Sea in winter. In contrast, during the last ice age, when massive ice sheets covered most of the northern continents, there was so much thick ice across the Arctic that polar bears and seals were pushed to the edges, where only a narrow band of seasonal ice habitat existed. Consequently, it is not surprising that polar bears, arctic seals, and walrus have been thriving since sea ice coverage hit a low point in 2007. Low summer sea ice extent is nothing new to these species, no matter what the cause. Contrary to what some scientists claim, ice levels this century have not made a continued decline since 2006. They seem to have stabilized, with some year-to-year -year variation, after a sudden drop to a new lower level with no negative consequences for wildlife. Dozens of fat polar bears filmed in Russia in February this year, hyped by news outlets worldwide as victims of climate change, had not been forced ashore by lack of winter ice. They were habituated garbage bears that chose to stay on land the previous fall because they knew there was a reliable food source at the town dump. Starving bears are not victims of climate change either. Starvation is the major cause of death for polar bears, for both older, weaker individuals and young bears with little hunting experience. Isolated examples of skinny bears tell us nothing about the effect of reduced sea ice on survival. What about attacks by bears on people? Two Canadian Inuit hunters were mauled to death by polar bears last summer, and both incidents were falsely blamed on recent sea ice declines. In truth, the Fox Basin attack survivors waited days for help at the end of August because they were surrounded by so much ice that it took an icebreaker to get to them. The real surprise is that sea ice models used back in 2005 to predict the future extinction of polar bears did not expect such low ice levels to occur until the year 2050. It turned out that not only were these computer model predictions of future sea ice wildly wrong, so were the predictions of future polar bear catastrophe. Polar bear numbers worldwide did not decline as predicted, but instead have increased by at least 16% and probably much more. Polar bears are doing very well in a warmer world. This summer, bears just off the ice have been fat and healthy after gorging on young seals during the spring. Based on the known response of its top predator to almost 50% less ice than there was in 1980, there is no evidence of a climate emergency in the Arctic. Polar bears and other Arctic species are taking reduced summer sea ice in their stride. And if there is no climate emergency in the Arctic, there is no climate emergency anywhere.